Hello everyone, today I'm going to go through my path to success for XRP, making the most out of your XRP throughout the course of, you know, the next 10 years, incorporating everything from how we enter the market all the way through to, you know, what the future looks like for XRP and the use cases that we can kind of take advantage of in the future as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. I've created another document for you. So I'm going to go through this very in a very detailed manner. But really, I want to start off like this. Imagine a world where your XRP not only grows value or grows in value, but also generates a passive income, making you financially free. And this isn't a distant dream of, you know, the future, right? It's not it's not some dystopian future. It's actually a reality for many of us XRP holders. We're going to talk about in this video everything from making profits from just strategic investing all the way through to earning a passive income in the DeFi space, just showing that XRP is more than just a banker's coin that so many people call it. It's actually a vehicle for achieving financial independence. So in the video, we're going to go over entry points, fundamental analysis, building out a portfolio, taking your profits, looking at XRP in a new way, looking to the future of XRP, and then a leap that we can all take today. So this is really is the path to success and the and the definition of success in my mind would be financially free we're now no longer relying on a job to pay us our money we're earning money from our investments ultimately paying our desired lifestyle right so that's the path to success the definition of success and all of that so let's get into entry points really i want to give this this whole document is supposed to be a way for you to kind of look at investing as almost as a way to, you know, conceptually enter at these points, making it very simple. I've like simplified this thing down so much. Like I could get into all the price targets and all of that stuff, but it's not like useful if you haven't built the foundational understanding, the the conceptual understanding of, of the market, right? And so let's get straight into it. Let's move back to the document. So in terms of entry points, understanding when to enter the market can be the difference between making profit and taking a loss. We all know that. This is where the art of technical and fundamental analysis come into play, especially for XRP investors. So let's get into technical analysis first. And I'm also going to give you two indicators that you just need to use. And that's all you need to use, right? <laughs> It'd be nice. There's thousands of indicators out there. I'm going to narrow it down to two for you. And really, this applies to any moment in the market, right? It, this applies to short-term thinking, like for short-term trades, it, it applies to long-term trades. And I'll tell you how to do that in a second. So technical analysis, just to define it, involves the study of price charts, identifying patterns and trends that could signal future movements. So we've all seen like price graphs like this and charts like this. That's what we're talking about here. This is technical analysis. On your charting systems, all you need are, are, are two indicators. And there are many indicators, like thousands and thousands. I've even paid for indicators that give you a special edge or whatever. But these are free. You don't need to pay for these ones. And they are, you know, they give you everything you need to know. So the first one is the Fibonacci retracement tool. Now, this is fascinating to me. I've talked about this at length. I'm not going to do it at length right now. But it's based on the Fibonacci sequence, which was discovered by Leonardo of Pisa, or Leonardo Fibonacci. Um, and they, he thought of all of this in the 13th century, right? And so many of us have heard about the golden ratio that, that you know, decides how beautiful a person is based on the symmetry of their face. Or it even determines what, you know, how the spirals in a, in a seashell occur, or a snail, or leaves on a tree. It's, it's fascinating. But in trading, the Fibonacci retracement tool is used to identify potential support and resistance levels. We're going to get into that in a second. Applied to charts to predict where prices might pause or reverse. Now, you know, when I talk about Fibonacci sequence, I'm very passionate about it because it's a science backed, bio biology backed indicator. It's based on a formula, biological formula. And because we are biological in nature, we actually conform to the rules that I say this is a law of nature, basically. And so when prices go up, it means humans are acting greedily. When prices go down, humans are acting with fear, fearfully. 
And so that's why you get the prices up and down. And therefore, because we are acting biologically and emotionally, we conform to the limits of what biology allows, which is shown in this formula. Absolutely fascinating. And so I just want to show everyone quickly how to use the Fibonacci retracement tool. So to use it, you can draw the high. You can use the tool to draw between the high and the low on a price point on the chart and it automatically marks the retracement levels. Um, and so you can see right here, this is the XRP chart from 2021 to today. And the high within that time period was right up here at $1.99. Uh, $1 you can see that line. I have placed it uh, at this top level. You'll also see this line goes all the way down diagonally, right? And it comes down to a point that marks the low, which you can see right here. So that's the low and that's the high. If you can click the high, drag it down to the low, you will see all of the retracement levels put out there. These are all of the Fibonacci uh, retracement levels that we that we're looking for. And the great thing is, is that you know even when you let's zoom into this just 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 for a little bit of extra explanation here, these lines now mark where the prices will come up to and come down to. So you can see this actually works over time. You can see this 0 0.236 line. It stopped the price here, stopped the price there. It, it the price came down and it bounced off here, it came bounced off there, bounced off there and there. So you can see these lines actually do have relevance. And even this line here, the 0 0.618 line, the price has come up, it can get past, came up, hit the line, came up, hit the line. And so we find these these lines are really helpful when you're looking at taking profits. Um, because you can use those lines to say, I'm going to take profits at this level, this level, and this level. Right? As the, and you can see how that becomes ex just extremely valuable um, as you're going through this. So let's uh, zoom in a bit more. Okay. So the other indicator that you can use are simple support and resistance lines. Now, you don't actually have to do these manually. Typically, it was always, always been thought you have to kind of go through and mark with a line where all of these lines are. But there is actually an indicator that will do it for you. Let me just change uh, this here because this is, this is not right. I've got to make it right. There we go. <laughs> so there's actually an indicator that can do it for you. And so you type in, you can see it right here, support and resistance levels with breaks by Lux Algo. That is the indicator that you can use. Um, and so make sure you go and use that one if you want to, if you want to use it. But I just want to get into what support and resistance lines are for everyone, just so it's actually clear. Support and resistance levels are fundamental concepts in technical analysis, which is reading the charts. Used to identify price levels on a chart where the price of an asset tends to reverse its direction. So, for example, the blue lines that we see on this chart right here, those are the support lines. These are levels where the price of an asset tends to find its support, it gets held support. As it falls, it hits this line and it bounces off. It's a support level. It stops it from falling even further. However, once the price has breached this level by a significant amount enough to confirm a true break, it's not uncommon for this support level to become a resistance level. So what that means is sometimes if you have a support level that's very clear, the price comes down strong enough and it goes all the way through. What will typically happen is the price will come back up but it will be resisted on that line and continue down. So that's called a resistance level. And that's also called, you would also say, turning support into resistance, turning a support into resistance. And so uh, the resistance lines are marked in red and it's really just the opposite. This is where the price tends to go up and is restricted. But if it goes up and goes through that line, it will typically come up, come back down to that line and now use it as support. Um, and this is often what they call in trading uh, a confirmation buy. When it's confirmed, the price has gone up above the resistance, dropped down, made it a support and started the bounce. It's confirmation that it's going to go up higher. So I I'm giving you this understanding because when we look at support and resistance and Fibonacci retracement tools, the idea here is just to understand on a base level generally the best time to be getting in not specifically not a specific price not a specific date or a specific pattern what we're looking for here is in general is this a good place to be buying right and so you know when you look at 
the market cycles of the market, like four years or so, it tends to go up and then it goes down for a few years. If the price has been going down for a few years, you don't really need to know what price it is. You don't really even need to know like the exact time or the date or the pattern. You just need to know this generally is a bear market and it's generally a good time to buy. And so I'm trying to provide you with the like, most zoomed out look at that technical analysis to get your best angle into XRP, even if it's in the short term, um, so that we can build this path to success. Um, so I know it might sound a bit elementary, but I'm trying to build the foundations here. So next we have fundamental analysis. And fundamental analysis is different to technical analysis, of course. And this is where you start looking beyond the chart. So it involves understanding all of, you know, what's happening with Ripple, the company behind XRP, the regulatory news, the partnerships, the, the amendments, the technological advancements, all of that kind of stuff. You can pay attention to that. And for example, like a new partnership with a major financial institution could signal increased adoption and demand for XRP potentially leading to price increases. So some people are very good at fundamentals. Some people are very good at technical, but if you combine the two, it gives you a really good overview of the general direction that you're going. And if you're not, if you know the general direction you're going is up, then, you know, you have more confidence in where you're buying now because it's going to go up in value. And that's ultimately the point of, of investing, right? So next in the process of building out your your journey in XRP or journey to success is building the portfolio now. Like now you've got to build your portfolio. Um, and the big elephant in the room at this point is fear of loss. Everyone has this massive fear of loss. It's funny, your fear of loss outweighs your excitement for winning. So most of us are just trying to risk mitigate rather than take risk. It's interesting, but it's natural. It's very natural to feel apprehensive about the losses, but if you can employ smart position sizing strategies, you can significantly mitigate the risk. Now, position sizing is the process of, ide of determining how much of your capital to allocate to a specific trade based on your personal risk tolerance and a series of other factors. And in my experience, a simple yet effective method for calculating your position size calculation involves determining your risk tolerance. For example, somebody who's really risk averse and they don't like taking risk, they are gonna allocate their portfolio differently. The, the allocation, the structure of their portfolio is gonna be different. So they're gonna diversify across lots of assets because they're trying to protect more than they're trying to risk, okay? So if you're a risky person, on the other hand, you might wanna just have one, two or three cryptocurrencies, right? And so XRP, in if we mix XRP into this conversation, XRP might just hold a larger percentage in your portfolio versus other cryptocurrencies if you're more risk on. And so, um, you know, it, it's kind of, I'm going to say, it. this is exactly what I talk about in the in the exit strategy workshop, the, the workshop that I created. It's it's been fantastic for for so many people. But we really get into the idea of how to build a portfolio. We use my my specific system for how to do that, the perfect portfolio generator, which is in the exit strategy workshop. Um, and I, I made this basically, and, and the the structure of it, the, the thought process behind it is that actually involves you listening to your core beliefs to create a structure for your portfolio. So it's not based on what someone else thinks, not based on someone else's situation based on your situation specifically and actually paying more attention to your gut rather than relying on other people. So an, an example of it would be if you thought there was going to be a great financial reset. Um, and if there is a financial reset, then your portfolio needs to reflect your belief that that will happen, right? But even more than that, there are ways that you can mitigate against that eventuality happening and you need different assets to mitigate against a financial collapse. So if there's a financial collapse, for example, the asset to be in is probably gold or silver, right? So this strategy that I made, this whole generator, the perfect portfolio generator, allows you basically to have exact numbers on how much of a percentage specific assets are, even outside of cryptocurrency, within your whole portfolio. So building out a portfolio 
that manages risk based on your risk tolerance. We have a risk tolerance questionnaire in the workshop as well. So you use all of that to create your portfolio. Um, and it's just really, really important. Then of course, it's the obvious moment, the moment to take profits, right? So now you've got to take profits and thinking about taking profits is like an art form, right? It really feels hard because the funny thing is, is that I, I, I wrote this, but then I emphasized the point afterwards. Knowing when to take profits can feel like an art form, but it's because you can never know when to take profits. You can only plan your profits and execute on them. There's a difference there. Nobody knows when to take profits, but you can make a plan and you can exit based on that plan. So you, you're basically having these predetermined targets for taking profits. You, you remove all the opportunity for you to get emotional and for the bad things to happen that come from emotion in trading. Because if you go through these emotional pitfalls, you can lead to holding on for too long or selling too early. And so what I've really tried to implement here in my exit strategy workshop is of course we're covering taking profit points, but we've implemented a tiered approach to taking profits. So this is where you sell, some people call it laddering out. So you have a, a, a certain portion of your portfolio that you want to take profits on, and over time at different price points, you know, a lot of it is focused on these, on these points here, on the Fibonacci scale. Um, based on those, you can kind of slowly come out of your positions as time goes on, but still allowing any gains that do continue to happen um, as, as the price continues to appreciate in that asset. So taking profits, obviously super important. Um, and that tiered approach, that laddering out approach is, is what I've seen to work the best. And that's what I talk about in my exit workshop. And so again, of course, the exit strategy workshop, the link is below or the link is somewhere, you'll find it. Um, if you really want to get that done, it's very valuable. So now that we've got our entry in, we've taken some profits. Now let's try to utilize our XRP for something, right? Because now we've taken profits, we can, we can convert that XRP into the stable coin or fiat currency. And we can go out into the world and buy things that we want to buy. But we all understand that concept, but I want to talk about new ways to use XRP. This time we're using XRP rather than using cash. There is a whole world out there called decentralized finance. You'll, you'll know it by the word DeFi. And in DeFi, we are unlocking so many opportunities for XRP um, and also cryptocurrency as a whole, but XRP specifically. Once XRP starts getting used in decentralized finance, this is going to open up so many different new streams of income for XRP holders that you might not have necessarily thought about. First of all, let's imagine, like my situation, you've got all of your crypto portfolio, but you're only taking profits on 30%. Okay. In this example, I said you take profits on 30% of your XRP, but you still um, have 70% left. I'm not taking any XRP out, but understand the structure. One way that is this could be done to still be able to use the 70% that's left in the market is contribute to AMMs. Now I have made a whole course on AMMs. It's, I think it was like an hour and a half or something, but this was the title of the video on YouTube. You can go and have a look at it. XRP AMMs are a big deal. Pay attention, beginner to expert full course. So an automated market maker, just to bring everyone up to speed here very quickly. It allows you to use your XRP to generate a yield. This is not staking. This is a different thing. So it's just like buying a property that you want to rent out. You're using your assets to generate an income. So I can imagine a time where, you know, people have bought XRP. They've taken their profits on their XRP using my exit strategy workshop, wink, wink. Um, and then they'll figure out what, then they're trying to figure out what to do with the profits. And while they're trying to figure out what to do with the profits, the remaining XRP could be contributing to an AMM. And you can put that XRP in the AMM and always be able to get that your investment back out if you want it. So it's a very risk off passive way to kind of wait. You know, you're earning while you wait and you think about what you're doing with the larger amount of your, your crypto that you've taken profits on. So the, be the easiest way to think about an AMM is a way for you to give XRP and get a yield, right? But it's not staking. But watch that whole video if you want to understand how it's not like staking. The yields for this are completely unknown. Like we don't know the percentages we'll get. 
it's likely that every single AMM that is put out will have a different yield and different structure. So you'll have to just pay attention. Probably something that's worth just kind of sitting back and watching as, as it kind of gets started. And it all gets started on March the 22nd, 2024. So from the day, today's recording, it's only like four days away. So let's sit back and watch, see how it goes. Um, and then we can make more educated entries into AMMs as time goes on. Another thing that people have really been sleeping on is loans. Right now, there's probably only one or two banks in the whole world that will offer a loan based on the XRP that you hold. But in the future, this will become very commonplace. Another way that people will maximize their XRP will be getting loans against their holdings. So I've got 100,000 XRP, for example, and I can get a loan on that 100,000 XRP, maybe at a 50% loan to value. This is where they'll give you 50% of your total value of your portfolio as a loan. Now, there's something really important to understand here. Even though there is higher risk, of course there's higher risk with doing this, but the cash that you get from the loan that they give you is tax-free. So I, I want to run you through when I get down here to the how it works section. I want to run you through exactly what that looks like and how, how mind-blowing that all is as well. So the benefits of using XRP as collateral mean that you get liquidity, you get money without having to sell because you, um, you get access to the cash that the bank give you. It's also tax-free, so not a taxable event like you would get from selling your XRP. Then also, you could benefit from the price appreciation of XRP as well. So what would be what would be the best thing to happen is that you get a loan. The price of the XRP goes up so much that the loan almost gets paid off just by the appreciation of the asset, right? That would be double thumbs up there. Um, but we're going to get into risks in a second with that whole strategy as well. So, you know, there really is a balance of... of benefits and risks here so how this would work imagine this imagine this happening first you would choose your location that you want to get your loan at. now i'm not necessarily saying this exists right now but it can exist in DeFi. does exist in DeFi, um but it's not regulated and insured like you would want or expect from a bank but in the future when it is done by a bank and the banks are doing this type of thing it will be insured it will be regulated and it'd be very very interesting so I would likely, if I'm ever going to do a loan on my XRP, it will just be at the bank. So I, I will be happy to wait for that. Um, I just want that regulation and the law and the insurance on my assets. So the next part is that you discuss your loan terms. So this would be done between you and the bank. And you discuss, you know, how much you're trying to take, like a 50% loan to value, which I'll talk about in a second. How long you're going to have to pay that over and the currency that you're gonna get as your loan. So loan to value is a, or LTV ratio will determine how much XRP you need to deposit. A typical LTV is 50%, meaning for every $100 worth of XRP, you could borrow 50. Or if you had a million dollars of XRP, you would get a loan to value at 50%, which would be $500,000. So uh, it's pretty nice. I don't know if it would be higher or lower, but that's what loan to value means. Then we've got to accept the loan agreement. So this is where we sign on the dotted line. They would then send us the money. So they send this, I guess, depending on the agreement or the terms, you would have them send it to you in stable coin or in fiat currency, whatever you wanted. And with that money, you would buy cash flowing assets. So let's say, for example, you've just received this massive loan and you got $500,000. Now there's a $400,000 uh, apartment complex that's really derelict it needs renovation um, so you buy that four hundred thousand dollar apartment complex you spend a hundred thousand renovating it to make it habitable so you've spent all of your five hundred thousand dollars of your loan but now every month that complex that apartment complex is generating you i don't know let's say two thousand dollars so with that money that you you're taking every month from the yield from those rentals you're paying back the loan that you've got and so there'll be a certain amount of time where that asset that cash flowing asset being the apartment complex is just paying back the loan paying it back paying it back paying it back now if the xrp is going up in value as well at the same time then this is really good because you're it's easier for you to pay it back so you make your repayments you pay back that loan because of course a loan if you've got a loan you've got to pay it back 
But once the term is finished, you've paid all of your loan off, you now get your XRP back. What this results in is a, a loan that is fully paid off. You get given back your XRP and you've still got the apartment complex, right? So now you've got all your XRP, a loan that's paid off and $2,000 a month extra. Those are just examples, right? And that monthly money every month, passive, that you've not done any tax, there's been no tax on it. Like you haven't, all the purchases of that apartment complex and the renovation, none of it is taxable because it was all debt. Um, and then all you get taxed on is the, the revenue that you generate from that asset, right? The yield, the rental income. This is how I imagine people navigating the world with their XRP, using their XRP without selling their XRP, getting a loan, buying cash flowing assets and taking advantage of those cash flowing assets forever even after you've paid your loan so super valuable i think and insight if that's the first time you've heard about this your mind is probably getting blown right now um but it doesn't come without risks and considerations of course one of the biggest risks is liquidation so if the value of xrp drops significantly while you still have the loan you may face a margin call requiring additional collateral meaning if the price has come down it's um the price has come down and now the value of your the value of your assets is is the same value as as the loan and if it goes past that amount they basically take all of your xrp and so that would be liquidation of your xrp so the bank don't want to lose but if it looks like they're going to lose they'll take your xrp so you know if you get a loan at the top of the market and you get this massive loan on your xrp and then the price has come down inevitably at the top of the market all the way down for the bear market the likely the likelihood is that you're going to get liquidated and they have to take your xrp so that's the real risk here and it's all about timing for loans like you there needs to be a balance you kind of need to you can't you can't get a loan in the bear market really because you don't have much money in the bear market you'd like you might let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars in the bear market you could only get fifty thousand dollars as a loan so you can't really do anything with that fifty thousand you can't buy a property like for rental maybe you could buy one but um in terms of like making big moves to to like apartment complexes and real proper moves in this in this market you you really need a higher asset value in order to get the higher loan to value uh dollar amount so it's tough it's a balancing act but if you buy it at the top you might get margin called and the price comes down you have to pay back you have to liquidate your xrp so there's a balance somewhere in between um i've heard lots of different strategies and theories about taking loans on xrp one of them being you know you you take your 50 percent loan to value but then you only use 66 percent of the loan to buy the cash flowing asset you leave 33 percent in there to pay off a margin call so the price comes down the bank goes we're about to liquidate your xrp unless you give us more money and you go okay i've reserved 33 percent of this debt that you gave me to to pay back to pay that back and buy me some time but again that's risky in and of itself because it now it's now like you're showing a level of confidence that the price won't go down much further but what if it does and so this is the real tough the tough element of all of that and then of course volatility is obviously a risk with xrp like other cryptocurrencies can be volatile and sharp prices price drops can increase the risk of liquidation so you could get liquidated but from your loan even if the price of xrp just went like just dip down into that lower area you could get liquidated and then the price goes straight back up and it'll just be a really bad situation right so another thing to consider when you're doing these loans with xrp is that you want insurance so you want to make sure that the platform has insurance cover and I'm sure you can arrange insurance cover on decentralized finance or DeFi, but I'm just, like I said, I'm waiting for the banks in order to have that insurance from the banks. So I'm happy to wait for that. Let's take a look at XRP in the future because we've looked at things that we can kind of do now. We've looked at, um, you know, loans and AMMs. We can kind of do those now. At least we're on the brink of being able to do them. But then looking further ahead, let's get, let's get more clued up on what's coming. Um, and so, XRP is at the forefront of transforming the financial industry, offering innovative solutions that extend far beyond its initial use case as a digital currency. Its emerging applications in finance, especially in cross-border payments and smart contracts, highlight its potential to redefine how money is moved 
blah, blah, blah. So I really think smart contracts is where we need to be looking for, for XRP. Of course, we've got AMMs, but you have to understand AMMs integrate themselves really interestingly into smart contracts. Because once you've got AMMs, you can attach smart contracts to those and it makes the whole thing on steroids, basically. So you've got the likes of Flare, where we've uh, XRP's kind of expanded into the smart contracts realm via Flare network. But then also Axelar partnership that I talked about very recently. There's a video that I made uh, about this on my YouTube channel. As well as the other amendment that's coming on the XRPL that allows for different blockchains to use XRP as payment. Again, I covered this on another video on the YouTube channel. We don't necessarily need XRPL to have smart contract functionality, but the ability to use XRP on smart contracts outside of the XRPL is basically the same thing, <laughs> right? So that's really good that we can bring this integration to a Ethereum-like functionality onto the XRPL, meaning we can have endless things happen on decentralized finance. That means loans, that means AMMs, that means tokenized real-world assets. It's massive with this integration. So smart contracts are going to be fundamental to that. Anything that you hear about smart contracts on the XRPL is just worth paying attention to. Looking at where we are in the market right now, being able to go to a chart and analyze that, okay, we're at support levels. Here's a resistance level. You know, be able to determine all of that. Also understanding that we've been in a bear market and we're just now coming out of it. It's not a bad time to be in just as a, uh, a general overview of the market. It's not a bad time to be getting into XRP or adding positions if you've already been here. I know many of you who've been in this community already. I've, I I heard on the, uh, we did a call yesterday, a private call for VIPs. Um, you know, many of you were buying at 32 cents on XRP. And you've doubled your money already in the last kind of five months, doubled your money. So, you know, Although there has been some gains made already in this community, looking forward and understanding where we are in the market and where we're about to be in the market, it's still not a bad time. Um, I've always said for as long as, well, as long as this channel has been around, 99 cents and below for XRP is a good, it's a good opportunity. I guess what I'm saying is now is the time to act. You've probably already got XRP, but one element of this whole thing that I think you probably don't have is an exit strategy. And I know I keep talking about it, but it is so, so important. That's why I created my exit strategy workshop. Within the exit strategy workshop, you get the checklist, the blueprint checklist, the risk tolerance matrix, where we understand who you are as a risk taker, the exit point calculator that gives you actual numbers uh, to exit your different assets, a current versus desired lifestyle worksheet that allows you to calculate exactly what your desired lifestyle costs and the portfolio amount required to, to make that happen. The perfect portfolio generator, which is like the mindset behind um, building building your portfolio and, and allocating certain amounts to different assets. And then a whole glossary to teach you all the words and keep you up to date on the words that we cover in the workshop. So you get loads of stuff in here. Um, and in addition, you also get a plan. Like you leave the whole thing with a plan of action for your cryptocurrency and your XRP um, that you just don't have right now. I can almost guarantee you don't have it. Um, and so because it was all recorded, it was live at one point. Um, there is going to be, a we are going to go down for maintenance for a while. Um, so I would get involved now before we go down for maintenance, where I'm going to be re-recording and going through the whole system again to add little nuances in there. But if you do join now, get access to it now. It means you get access to all of those updates in the future as well. Um, but the maintenance will be happening soon. So make sure you just buy today. So I want to, that, that's it really. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I hope we've kind of shown, illuminated the path to XRP success. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you tell your friends about it. Show them the future of the assets that you hold. Stay emotional. We found a way out, ain't that enough? So take my hand, don't you hesitate. I'm talking about a plan, it ain't too late. Click the link below, what a sight to see. 90 minute workshop gonna set you free Change your life with an exit strategy Follow the link and take that workshop you'll see Rolling with the best, leaving the rest behind Going on the road to redemption, it's time Oh yeah, we're rolling on the road to redemption Cutting loose from the chains, ain't no more contention
是谁